Thank you so much. Thank you so much, and good morning. I'm so delighted to be here with so many people who share such a deep commitment to the arts. And Bob Lynch of Americans for the Arts, thanks to you and your team for your work day in and day out to advance the arts in America. The co-chairs of our Congressional Arts Caucus, Congresswoman Louise Slaughter, Congressman Leonard Lance, thank you so much for your leadership on Capitol Hill. We're so appreciative of Alaska Senator Lisa Murkowski, New Mexico Senator Tom Udall, Maryland Senator Chris Van Hollen, <laughs> House Minority Leader and California Congresswoman Nancy Pelosi, Oregon Congresswoman Suzanne Bonamici, Michigan Congresswoman Debbie Dingell, and we're also looking forward very much to hearing from Georgia Congressman John Lewis very soon. Thank you very much. We know that between the first step of presenting the blueprint budget and the last step of when Congress votes to enact the 2018 budget, there are many, many steps. And we're working with OMB, Office of Management and Budget, to provide them with the information that they've requested. And in the meantime, however, our job is to do our job. Our ongoing work in each of the 50 states and in all 435 congressional districts and United States territories is about making a difference in the lives of all Americans through the arts. Every year, the National Endowment for the Arts grants to more than 2,400 arts programs, ranging from music and dance and theater, art exhibitions, art education, media arts, healing arts, creative writing, folk arts, sparking economic vitality in communities of all types and sizes, not only in large cities, but also in small and mid-sized populations in rural areas. Last year, half of the NEA grants, that's 50%, went to mid-sized communities of just over 250,000 in population, Communities of under 250,000 received 10% of NEA grants, and then an additional 13% of NEA grants went straight to rural areas. I believe the smallest population we currently fund is a rural community of 50 people. The National Endowment for the Arts is the only funder, public or private, that provides equal access to the arts in all 50 states, the District of Columbia, the United States territories, and in many parts of the country, federal funding of the arts is essential. For example, there are few foundations or individual art patrons in the Appalachian region, but the National Endowment for the Arts is there. And the return on investment of NEA dollars leverages up to $9 in other outside funds. So every dollar that the NEA awards directly to organizations is matched on average by an additional seven to $9 of funds from other sources. Last year in 2016, this resulted in $500 million of other outside funds for the same arts projects. So instead of taking away from private giving, NEA grants spark more giving from other outside sources. Private foundations tell us that the rigorous process and strict guidelines that the NEA uses attracts their own private dollars to these NEA grant recipients. And grantees from nonprofit organizations, large and small, tell us that NEA grants serve as a catalyst that many of them use to raise other needed dollars to support their programs. We have seen firsthand the transformational role that the arts play in equalizing educational opportunities. Because when it comes to children and youth, especially those living in the inner cities, especially those from households with very few opportunities, the NEA is there. 42% of NEA grants were specifically designed to reach high poverty neighborhoods. Students who have an education that incorporates the arts have a strong relationship with higher academic performance and increased standardized test scores, lower dropout rates, and more eagerness and responsible attitudes about community service and civic engagement. 
These are all benefits that are reaped by students from all walks of life, regardless of socioeconomic status. And the NEA grants have played a role in closing the education achievement gap. And now, the NEA is at the forefront nationally to support our service members and veterans, so our Creative Forces Initiative is a partnership that we created with the United States Department of Defense, serving the unique needs of active duty and veterans who have been diagnosed with PTSD, post-traumatic stress disorder, traumatic brain injury, and other psychological health conditions. And this Creative Forces program provides that important connection, that link between clinical patient treatment, where service members work with certified arts therapists, and those great and relevant programs, the arts programs that are out there happening in the community. And now we can support creative arts therapy programs in 12 military and veteran medical facilities across the nation and also provide community arts programming in the states where these clinical sites are located. We're partnering with Americans for the Arts and the State Arts Councils for the Community Arts Program piece, and I hope you'll learn more, even more details about that today. So the arts help the economy. 4.8 million Americans are employed by the arts. That's more people than are employed by either the military or the construction sectors. The arts help our children, high school students from low socioeconomic areas who participated in the arts were three times more likely to earn bachelor's degrees than their peers who did not have the same arts experiences. The arts help the healing process. Participating in the arts has been linked to improved cognition and memory, reduction of depression and anxiety, inter improved interpersonal skills, improved sleep, and shorter hospital stays. The arts help our communities. Over the past five decades, the National Endowment for the Arts has invested more than $132 million in creative placemaking programs that help rehabilitate public areas, provide communities with design, planning resources, and they address social issues through design. So these are just some of the demonstrated ways that counter that old and tired perception that the arts are isolated from the rest of the community or they're only for some people and not for others or they're frivolous and they play no substantive role in our everyday lives. These examples show the exact opposite. But these examples and these accomplishments are not achieved alone. We are so fortunate to be able to have such strong partners across the country at so many levels. National organizations like the National Assembly of State Arts Agencies and Americans for the Arts and regional arts organizations representing all parts of America and state arts councils. Remember that 40% of all NEA funding goes to our state and regional partners and it allows us all together to reach tens of thousands of communities, large, small, densely populated, and rural every year. Each of us plays an integral part within the arts ecosystem, and I firmly believe that the arts are thriving in America. They're not tanking, because why? We've made it a priority to work together so when it comes to the arts, it's not about a zero-sum game where one wins and the other loses. Instead, we're working together in a both-and world. You work with us, and we work with you. There is such a far greater ability to make an impact when we look for ways to help each other succeed. And that's my main message to you today, to thank you for working together in so many ways to change lives, to restore vitality in communities, to strengthen the economy, because together what we're really doing is we're giving Americans across the country the opportunity to imagine and to create and to innovate and to dream and to belong through the arts. Thank you so much for what you're doing and enjoy your day on Capitol Hill.